Today, we're gonna to be talking about 10 native plants for beginners with blooms that go for the majority of the year. Number one is gonna be a native shrub that can be grown around most of the state, firebush. Firebush is an amazing plant because it can be used as a privacy hedge to a statement piece to actually being shaped like a tree. Firebush is great because it actually has somewhat of a tropical look, even though it can be grown in the north of Florida all the way down to South Florida. Its vibrant coral flowers will attract things like bees, small butterflies and large butterflies and even hummingbirds. It produces berries for our songbirds and overall is a great plant to add to your garden. And not only do you get color from the gorgeous flowers, when the winter comes and you don't get a lot of flowers, the leaves start to change color. So you will have red vibrancy all year round. Number two is going to be tea bush. Maybe tropical isn't your style and you're looking for something that would fit better in an English cottage garden. Well, our native tea bush is a great plant for that. Its silvery gray leaves are going to create a cooling feel even in the heat of summer. And its flowers are known for attracting tons and tons of bees. What's also great about this shrub that can get 8 to 12 feet tall is that you can actually use them to make tea. Maybe you're not looking for such a large shrub like tea bush and fire bush, but are looking for something that's in the small to medium range. And that's why we would recommend button sage. This bush would pair really nicely with your tea bush, kind of adding to that cottage feel. But while it's called a button sage, it's actually in the lantana grouping. So it gets umbrals of flowers, kind of think umbrella. Lots of tiny little teacup flowers that pollinators just love. So whether you're trying to attract bees or butterflies, adding a native type of a lantana like button sage is an amazing plant to add to your garden. And beyond just helping our pollinators, this is another great plant for helping our songbirds because after you get those umbrals of white pinky flower, you actually then get berries for our songbirds. So you can feed everything from bees to butterflies to birds with this small shrub. If you're looking into creating more of a magical experience by covering an arch trellis or you have one of those chain link fences that you really don't want to see, well consider adding vines to your native garden with Blue Ocean Morning Glory. What's amazing about Blue Ocean Morning Glory is you get these giant blue morning glories which as they fade over their next day, go from this bluish color to a really beautiful magenta color. These large three inch tropical looking morning glories, you can add a lot of color to the beginning of your day. Now, like many of our native morning glories, they vine quite a bit and they can wrap around lots of structures. So do make sure that you have some clearness away from things like your house gutters. This plant can grow anywhere from eight feet to 10 feet, 12 feet. So if you're trying to cover a lot of area, this can be really good for it. Another great thing about this plant is that it can take a little bit of shade. So if you're trying to get an English cottage garden or a tropical garden, this is a great way to bring in to those spaces where you have fence lines or trellises, some color, to your garden. Number five, this is going to be common tick seed, aka Coreopsis leavenworthy. If you're looking to create a lot of movement and a lot of bold yellow color through spring and summer and even into early fall, Coreopsis leavenworthy is a plant that you should consider adding. <laughs> what about Coreopsis is it's actually the state wildflower for the state of Florida. So you may often find this growing along roadsides, but you can add it to your garden to add a whimsical moving plant that will a lot of color once it comes into full bloom. This plant can get anywhere from two to four feet tall. It likes semi-dry to semi-wet conditions. And if you're a big fan of the wildflower look, well, Coreopsis Lovingworthy might be for you. Number six, looking to go back into that English cottage garden and add some native wildflowers, consider something like snowy square stem, AKA salt and pepper. This plant actually has two forms, both this larger type and a small mounding type. The larger type comes from central and north Florida versus the lower growing one comes from south Florida. If you're considering with an English cottage garden, having something that continues that kind of fairy look, adding with something like your tea bush, this one would actually pair really nicely with things like your tea bush, your button sage, because it's gonna have kind of a loose shrubby texture, but you're gonna get these white flowers from basically fall, winter, and into spring. Pollinators love this plant. And if you combine those three, you're gonna have an amazing, amazing garden. Number seven, tropical sage. If you're into wildflowers, but you have that tropical looking garden, well, tropical sage is the plant for you. This plant actually comes in three colors from our classic coral red to white and flamingo pink. This plant can get anywhere from three to five feet tall and it has a tendency to seed and reseed. So if it's getting a little bit leggy, no worries, just cut it back and you'll be doing great. This plant is beloved by bees and butterflies and hummingbirds too. So if you pair it with our number one choice of firebush, you're gonna attract 
so much wildlife to your garden. But what about ground covers to add to your tropical native garden? Well, consider something like beech verbena for number eight. This low growing plant only gets a couple feet tall and can help fill in the spaces between your wildflowers and below your shrubs so that you can keep out things like pesky weeds and minimize how often you have to water and do some of the maintenance at the ground level. This gorgeous pinky purple flower can bloom as early as late winter for those southern portions of the state and will bloom throughout spring and summer and into early fall. But if you're looking for something that could go with your tropical garden or an English cottage garden, go with number nine, our native porterweed. This low growing ground cover actually sends out and fills in areas about six, nine inches tall. It gets cute little purple blue flowers that are there almost the entirety of the year. And what's amazing is this is what's called a host plant, which means that certain types of butterflies lay their eggs on this and then hatch, get the caterpillars, which means they are definitely gonna be coming and visiting this plant. Things like Cassius blue, Miami blues, lots of the little blue butterflies really enjoy our native porterweed. So what do you think? What's your favorite plant for beginners? But this last plant, whether you wanna put it with a tropical looking native garden or an English cottage garden, this is a great ground cover that can be used as a ground cover and a lawn alternative. This is frog fruit. Amazing about frog fruit is not only will it help attract small butterflies and bees, it's also the host plant to three different butterflies, the Phaon Crescent, Common Buckeye, and the White Peacock. So not only can you get away from having to water your lawn so much and do lots and lots of maintenance, you also can be bringing butterflies in. And if you wanna learn more about native lawn alternatives for Florida, check out this video here. Or if you wanna do edible plants that are native, check out this video here. Okay, I'll see you soon, bye.